epithelial ingrowth under lasik flaps tips and tricks for preventing recurrence laser in situ keratomyelosis or lasik is the most commonly performed refractive surgery worldwide Though the procedure yields miracles in treating a wide range of refractive errors, it is amenable to traumatic flap displacement even after many years. Derek et al. reported a case of traumatic LASIK flap dislocation 14 years after the procedure. Studies done in rabbits indicate that wound healing post LASIK occurs only at the periphery of the wound, leaving the center clear. In photorefractive keratectomy, epithelial migration and collagen fibrils get affected in the ablated central zone. In LASIK, it occurs only at the edge of the flap. We present a case of displaced and folded flap with epithelial ingrowth secondary to blunt trauma. A 33-year-old female with a history of bilateral femtosecond LASIK done 10 years back presented with defective vision and glare in the right eye following trivial blunt trauma with the finger. The best corrected vision was reduced to 6 by 60. Slit lamp examination revealed normal lids and conjunctiva, a vertically folded and temporarily displaced LASIK flap with epithelial ingrowth of 5 by 3 mm partially in the visual axis was seen under the slit lamp with underlying clear stroma. The troubleshooting in our case was the late presentation, fixed folded nature of the flap, epithelial ingrowth and a high risk of recurrence. We decided to surgically reposit the flap along with some additional procedures in order to prevent recurrence of epithelial ingrowth. Complete epithelial debridement was done with the help of the dry wick sponge. The edge of the flap was identified with the help of the femtosecond dissector and was separated from the underlying stromal bed. The flap was lifted off and the folded edge was straightened with the help of the dissector. With the help of a Tooke's knife, epithelial ingrowth was scraped off from the stromal bed as well as from the undersurface of the flap and the surrounding epithelium was also removed. Thorough washing of the flap was done with balanced saline solution. After washing, the flap was gently reposited back and adhered to the underlying stromal bed with the help of two dry wick sponges. Further adherence of the flap was ensured to the stromal bed and the surrounding cornea with the help of tensito nylon sutures. Bandage contact lens was placed at the end of the surgery. Epithelial ingrowth reported incidence in refractive surgery ranges from 0.2 to 15%. It is 0.92% in primary LASIK cases and increases to 1.7% in enhancement procedures. Clinically significant epithelial ingrowth is that which extends to the pupil and decreases vision, induces night glare, keratolysis, induces astigmatism, epithelial irregularity, and foreign body sensation. Multiple techniques for removal of EI include scraping with adjunctive treatment like ethanol, mitomycin C, phototherapeutic keratectomy or suturing the flap. Spangod et al. described the use of proparacaine whereas David used fibrin glue as an adjunct. Jeffrey Machette has classified epithelial ingrowth in three grades based on the involvement from the edge of the flap and presence or absence of line of demarcation. Ours was a grade 3 EI with ingrowth of more than 2 mm extending towards the visual axis. The steps taken to remove the ingrowth as well as to prevent the recurrence in our case was complete epithelial debridement, identifying the flap edge and lifting, aggressive scraping of the epithelium beyond the flap margin to avoid recurrence of epithelial ingrowth, gentle scraping of the epithelial ingrowth from undersurface of the flap, Thorough washing of the stromal bed with BSS, this also avoids recurrence. Stretching of the flap, it helps in tight apposition of the flap to the stroma, also avoiding recurrence. Suturing of the flap margins also ensures complete apposition of the flap to the stromal bed and avoids recurrence of EI. At two week post-op, the vision was 6-6 with no evidence of ingrowth. On a concluding note, suturing is the best technique to handle both elastic displaced flaps as well as recurrence of epithelial ingrowth. Thank you.